We are standing here with Muna Dajani. She is an environmental researcher and activist from Palestine. Muna, what are the impacts of climate change in the region? Well, the Middle East region has been characterized historically as a region of water scarcity. And today with climate change, we are seeing that these events are being, uh, they are being exacerbated because we have lack of rain, we have rising temperature, we have a lot of extreme weather conditions happening, and also uh, a lot of food insecurity as well in the Arab countries. So do you think climate change plays a role in the minds of people? If we talk in the context of the Arab countries, uh, we see that this has not been on the mind of people, of course, because living under authoritarian regimes where the lack of uh, lack, uh, the, the access to n environmental resources is, is almost not non-existent, people have, have, be, have played the role of recipients of these resources rather than active participants in, in the decision making around controlling these resources and all of that. So we see that people don't feel that climate change is an important concern for them. It's, a, it's, it's not a primary concern, definitely. And it's not even maybe a secondary or tertiary. Uh, but, but that doesn't mean that there is no connection between climate change and, uh, and what is happening today in the Arab world. But if we talk about the Palestine specifically, we see that also climate change is really exacerbating the vulnerability of communities, especially in the West Bank and Gaza. Because, uh, because these communities, which are agrarian communities, they, they depend on agriculture, today face a, a, a confiscation of their land, of their farmland, in addition to, uh, to denying them access to water resources by the Israeli occupation. So we see that climate change there is maybe felt more by people, but again, not directly linked to climate change events. So how do you think can we reconnect the people more to the issue of resources? Uh, definitely there has been a, a lack of connection. There has been a gap between government decision making when it comes to natural resources and today when it comes to climate change negotiations like the one we're here in today and the, the people. The people don't know what's really happening and there, there is no mechanism by the government to let them know and again what, what I mentioned before in, in terms of lack of con access and control to these resources. So today we have to work on two levels. First the governmental level where the governments have to really work in a participatory way to include citizenship. For, uh, to, to include citizens uh, in, in active participation in this decision-making process around environmental issues and uh, on the other hand to work on grassroots movements because there has been a lot of problems a project that happened in the Arab world and also in Palestine, specifically in Gaza, that really showed that communities can be res resilient. Communities are today depending on the minimum resources that they have and, and they are finding green, uh, sustainable solutions to the problems they face today. So I think that education is really important. People now have realized because of their need uh, for a change that uh, they, they are now going to the green way, but they're not really uh, consciously doing it. They're doing it because of the lack of resources, but they, have, they are also building their environmental uh, capacities uh, without, the, without the help of the government. So I think that the most important thing is to really reduce the gap between government and people and to have the active participation of, of the citizens be more evident in education systems by transforming the education system to include environmental uh, issues that are really, um, really shaping our, our society today. Thank you very much, Muna. You're welcome.